So this is saying, is my audio fine? Your audio is fine. Okay. Dave, you returned from your trip. Yep. Can you guys hear me okay? Mm-hmm. Zhang Chang, would you like to introduce yourself? Oh, that's Wei Pan, it says now. I guess. Or maybe that person left and William joined us. Did we verify with our user two was Peter? User two is Peter. Great. I think I can even rename him. I can expel him. I used to be able to rename him. You spelled you could rename them, didn't you? Uh, yes. You know, he Everybody other than the host can rename them for themselves with a right click. I think the host can do it for everybody. You should be able to see a right click and rename. No, I can't. I don't. It's not in this version of this program anymore. Huh. Oh well. Okay. Well, I just renamed them for myself, but everybody else has to do it too. Yeah, I just tried to rename me. I I don't seem to be able to. No, because you're connected. You're also connected by the computer so you can't rename the oh, good anyway. point all yeah. right anyway okay so we have and we have sarah and uh and ned and uh we have 10 nine participants Good. All right. I got you all down. All right. So, um, so I'm going to suggest we go to 150 first since we had two approvals and two comments. And I think I just addressed the comments. And so we had comments from Lawrence and Hank, and then I just pushed an update. And so you, I moved your request changes back to uh, please review again. So I can highlight what I just changed for, uh, okay, so the, that's one. Please look at the second sentence there as brand new. That's So Lawrence had asked for one thing, and then Hank, you'd asked for a longer list. And so this is the longer list um, that I tried to keep the wording not inconsistent with the later section, right? Um, not all reference values are known good values. We already had text later on about that. And so I tried to uh, both in incorporate Hank, your text, plus uh, the last phrase there is a nod to the language later on, that there can be reference values that are also known bad values and things. And so, mm -hmm. so that's one of the two main changes that I did for Hank. Please validate you are running the malware. No, no, no. Please validate that you are not running the malware. <laughs> <laughs> no, I just known bad values. That's all, right? Well, I'd be, it really <laughs> talks about uh, examples of uh, within a particular range. And so it would be, you know, yeah, yeah, um, yeah. good good before, right? And so the, yeah, uh, I get it. The, the expiration time would be a known bad value. Once it hits that, you're bad. Okay. Any comments? I'm going to hit re resolve. Hank, does that text look like what you wanted? Yeah, excellent. Thank you. It's uh, okay. Uh, okay. And then the other uh, thing he wanted was in the, I think, in the trust model section. So uh, there's a couple of deletions. You can say stop right there. Um, the you want to, I think, Lawrence wanted known good removed from both of those because it was incorporated up above in 841 and 869. And it's not showing me the last one that I just pushed. So either I didn't push it correctly. I just hit or, reload. So oh, it should okay, be yeah. fresh. There should be one in the trust model section that I just did. Maybe you didn't push it. That's what I'm wondering. Let me check here. Um, it's shows as push. Let me see if it actually made the change in here. If it somehow lost the change. Um, no, it out. should be it should be in there. So let me see what line number. Because it shows um, that it is it matches the remote 
branch number. Um, the line number that I changed starts at 808. Does it show anything around 808? Ah, yes, that's it. Okay. So uh, it looked to me like that. So, um, so the, I think it was Hank. It was either Hank or Lawrence. I think it was you, Hank. That you said uh, we need to, add, since we added a new role per se, that the trust model section needed to mention that role as well. And it looked to me like the text that covered endorser and verifier owner, that same text would apply to reference value provider too. So I just added an and into the two places the other two were listed. Oh, that's yeah, what I it, to, it was yeah. in there, and I think that paragraph still applies because uh, often the, like, the reference value provider is either the endorser or the verifier owner, so that's not shouldn't be surprising. Yeah, I have to check that again. So my assumption is uh, from the top of it, yes, but I I just perceived this as uh, yeah, I, I didn't understand what you were doing <laughs> basically. So uh, I we have to uh, check the semantics again. My assumption is go ahead, please. I will, I will come back to this as I uh, think this is unexpectedly not correct. Uh, but for now, I would even say we can accept this because okay. it would make it would make a lot of sense. Yeah. Okay. So then, are there any objections to just going ahead and merging it now? And if you find an issue, then just another issue. No, that's fine. Okay. Cool. And, and Lawrence, just to answer your question on the call uh, last time. Uh, Peter and I were saying the same thing, and so that this change was me attempting to uh, put in what Peter and I were both saying. And one of the main points was that um, typically the reference value provider is either the endorser or the appraisal policy provider, which is the verifier owner. But in theory, it could be a third party, a third entity that's neither of those that um, that is obtained from. And so this is flexible enough to handle all three models, where it's this exactly the same as the endorser and you get it as part of the endorsements, or it's exactly the same as the verifier owner, and you get it as part of the policy, or the policy references both the endorsements and the reference values from some third party. Uh, all those are possible, and so the new text tries to encompass that. So that's the only uh, difference from what you might have expected is that it could, in theory, be yet a third entity. It may not be very common, but it's possible. So that was the summary from last time. Yeah, that, that sounds great. Yeah, it sounds good to me too. Thanks, Peter. So why there was a wrap, there was a connection between that one and one forty eight. Um, I I th think that we no. said that one forty eight. That oh, oh well, I've not gone back to you since uh, I just got back last night and haven't looked at anything since our last meeting. Yeah, I just I just trying to remember. Yeah. Uh, Does this obsolete the other one? Yeah. yeah, that was the question. Oh, the system examples is quite different. There was a yeah. different one that I thought that this one obsoleted, in my opinion. Yeah, I think I don't remember. I know it obsoleted your one that we did the edits because I incorporated your edits and, and then yeah, did some that's more. Fine. Yeah. yeah, that's right. And oh. you put it in a better place. Um, okay, so what next then? I don't know since I haven't reviewed any of these since last time since I just got back late last night. <laughs> yeah, so the rest are Lawrence, 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 uh, Ned. I don't think I read that one. The top of my list is 149. Okay. Or, uh, yeah, PR 149. All right. So Ned has a very tiny change here. A testing, a tester signing capability, a testing environments, various capabilities. I don't like the word various mm. capabilities. <clears throat> okay. I am fine with the intent of Ned's. I'm just, I'm just reading both the red and the green a couple times. Um, but offhand, I think I'm fine with this. And Lawrence, you were suggesting that some entity, which is a different part of the sentence, be an endorser. Um, yeah, I kind of agree with Lawrence. Yeah, endo endorsements are always produced by an endorser. So by definition, yeah. Yeah, and we defined endorser here so we can say this. Yeah, exactly. Which is my overall <laughs> comment, unfortunately not here on change, but on conversation. Uh, uh, I made a few comment on this, sorry. Delete typically a manufacturer because the 
They don't, uh, they don't. I think a typical manufacturer was the synonym for endorser. Now that we made it be more precise, we don't need uh, the expanded definition. Yeah, there you go. It te technically, it's the entity that implements the endorser role, but whatever. <clears throat> it's more of a mouthful. Hopefully, people get it. Um, let's wait for it, wait for it, wait for it. Um, <laughs> are, you, are you doing the review or the accept? Oh, yeah, just for the review. He's doing, oh, sorry. A, he's doing a, okay. a Michael approved. Yeah, I was like a tiny mouse window here. Sorry, um, so tiny. Did, did uh, we did we merge in that change or did no? We no, I didn't. I just I, that, I, okay, I had it. to accept some suggestion before okay. I could commit the suggestion. I got you. Uh, um, change entity to endorser. Um, uh, hold on, uh, I'm I'm now thinking about uh, Ned's change. Um, Go back, uh, look at the. So, so I, I, I'm not committing. Change. I'm not committing yeah. next change. I'm committing yes. the change. The cha next change. All right, there so we go. All right. Here, here's the only concern that I have when I'm reading through this. The the green is not incorrect. It is correct, and it is actually more precise. I think the wording in the red. And look at the ending part. Right. The changing an attester to an attesting environment. Okay. We've already defined a tester in the terminology. And so that part, the, the red part is understandable, the ending half of the sentence. The attesting environment is not defined until way down in the two types of environment thing. And so because uh, of that, I would prefer being less precise here and just leaving that part as a tester, although every other part of NEDS I think is fine. So I would Which is exactly my bit, comment, yeah, Dave. Yeah, so change the testing environment back to a tester and then later on in the document, it'll make sense why it's actually a testing environment. But here we can just, we, I think we have to just hand wave a bit without having to restructure the document. So I think this is actually better, even though Ned's text is correct. <laughs> yeah, I think that's the way I'd have to look, have to do it. Yep. So you said 148, right? I think you said 149, but Lawrence? Oh, okay. Yeah, you did say 149. Oh, nice dog. Nice ringtone. <laughs> that very, is my alarm. Very, <laughs> uh, very Miami Vice. So I went through all of the paragraphs in uh, section seven um, and labeled them whether they were uh, primary trust flow or secondary trust flow. Primary being, uh, you know, about establishing trust in the attester, secondary being about confidentiality or uh, privacy. Um, there was no discussion at all of primary trust flow under um, attester. So um, I added one. Um, do we do we define those terms, primary I, and secondary? I, I don't. I don't no, know no, know those terms either. Yeah, I, I would think I, you use those in the text. Yeah, yeah, I, 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 mean, I, I think it would be okay to 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 uh, use those in the text, but no, we haven't defined them yet, and no, we're not using them in the text yet. But I, I just did it because. Uh, you know, I, like I said, I went through every paragraph in section seven to, to, to understand whether it was primary trust flow or secondary trust flow. Um, are we running? Am I are we looking at the right pull request then? I'm not sure that's uh, we are. I think so. Yeah. Because I don't see any convention of primary or secondary in the changes. Right, that's what I'm saying. No. It's, it's not in there. And I think it's best to not put it in there. Yeah. Meaning. Uh, Minimize number of necessary terms. <laughs> yeah, I'm just describing it just so you understand where, where I'm coming from. Um, 
but yeah, there, it's not mentioned in the text anywhere. Um, so, and I, what I, what I wanted to make sure is that every subsection mentioned discussed both the primary uh, trust flow and the secondary trust flow. Make sure that that was there in both places. So, in the section on the attester, there was no discussion of primary trust flow. So I added one. Um, so that was that was one one change. And, and I'm just going to translate what you're saying into layman speak because I I, I I understand you're saying. What it did not have a discussion of is the trust between the verifier and the lying party. It only, sorry, the the attester and their lying party. It only talked about attester to verifier. And when you say primary, you just mean attester to relying party. And when you say secondary, you mean attester to verifier, verifier to relying party. No, I don't. Okay, that's then not, what do you mean? That's not right at all. Okay, then I don't have any idea what you're talking about. I understand what's in the text. <laughs> I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't understand these changes in 149 having yeah. any with what you were just discussing. So that's why I don't know whether we're in the right pull request. We're on the right pull request. We are, okay. We're okay, so. Description of a test <laughs> verifier test, okay. So primary trust flow is how the relying party comes to t trust the attester. That's the, the whole objective of this. Yep, that's uh, what I said. Of attestation, relying party comes to trust the attestation, okay. the truster, right? And that that trust happens because the relying party trusts the verifier, okay. the verifier trusts the endorser, the endorser puts a key into the attester, and the attester proves itself to the verifier. So that's the that's the basics of the primary trust flow. Okay. Why is it a trust flow? I mean, the, the term flow. I mean, because it's like a flow diagram, or why is this a flow? Well, because to, I mean, to me, uh, it doesn't. It's a process. It's a process. It's, a, it's, a process. it's, it's, it's Lam. It's Lamson's trust semantics. I don't know yeah. if he uses flow or not, but it's, it's it, that. It doesn't matter since we don't use the word flow in this PR. So yeah, go on. Tell us what's the secondary. Okay. Quality and privacy of the data. So uh, that's all uh, about. Um, does the a tester trust the verifier enough to give it the data that might be, um, you know, privacy sensitive or might reveal something about vulnerabilities. Um, so it's basically a flow in the opposite direction, and it's a flow through all of the entities in in the in the um, in the system. So if you and if you look at um, uh, like the the paragraphs, the current paragraphs in. Uh, Let me pull in, the document in, up. In section seven, some of the paragraphs there are many of the paragraphs in there are about the secondary trust flow. They're about how does the, um, for example, how does the attester trust the verifier? How does the verifier trust the relying party? That's in the okay. privacy section. <clears throat> Uh, no, it's uh, it's in trust model section. It's in the trust model section. Yeah, we are that. That's the uh, yeah. That's the, the text. That, that's the text that we just looked at in the last PR. The the change that I did to add the reference value provider into the third. The if you scroll down to wow. the uh, verifier just, owner section, then that will have that confidentiality aspect in that paragraph. Yep, that one. Yeah, but it's it's all over the place. Go back, go back to to the yeah, test. That's the, section, that's the section right there. That's the text that talks about they need to trust the verifier before giving the endorsement reference values or pressure policy to it. That's what you just defined as being your secondary one. That's covered in that sentence. It, okay. No, it's it's other places too. Can you go back to where you were, um, Michael? And and scroll up to a tester. So right there, those two paragraphs right there are all about. Uh, privacy and confidentiality as well. So in that attestment yeah, section, yes, yes, yeah, yeah, that is the, the intent of the section is exactly I think what you are calling the secondary flows. Yes, correct. Because we we cannot talk about them uh, in entirely because it's all about evidence and 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 what are reference various flows, but there has to be some trust beforehand, and that is the model and that is explained here. I think that is the intent of the section actually. Your secondary flow scope. Yeah, what you're calling the secondary flow is just establishing trust in the verifier. Which is the, the which is the terminology that's used in the document? Just how you establish trust in the verifier, and different entities have to establish trust in it: the attester, the, the 
Sorry. No, it's, how do you establish it's, in the verifier if I set a test I mean, how do you establish trust in the verifier? It's it is the the the, the uh, I believe section seven has to discuss both the primary trust flow and the secondary trust flow in every subsection. I am not sure I agree with that. What your what every subsection is is um, uh, for any entity, anything that it has to trust in that it has any other any other entity that it has to any other for each role for every other role that it has to trust that it needs a statement about needing to trust that particular role. That's what I would claim. Now, that may or may not be synonymous with what you said. I can't tell yet, but I'm saying I think that every section needs something unless it actually needs to trust that other role. So it might. I haven't gone through to check, but. Yeah, I think uh, you're saying that every t every place there's trust that needs to be described, right? Yeah, the intent is there's one well, paragraph or something for within each role one sentence or paragraph or whatever for each other role that it needs to trust. Yeah. So in this case, the attester needs to trust the verifier. So there's a, uh, there's a paragraph about that, right? The, the uh, endorser may need to trust the verifier. There's a paragraph about that. The verifier needs to trust the endorser. There is a paragraph about that. Right. Uh, so, uh, yeah, I agree or with what, that. What, what was missing, I guess, is is who needs to trust who uh, uh, other than, if there's one that was missing. Uh, uh, other than sort of the way that the information is laid out, is there information that's incorrect that's here, or is there information that's not here that should be here? Um, I believe there is information that is incorrect. That's uh, in the verifier section that is that is uh, uh, partially shown right now by Michael. Section seven. Yeah. Um, uh, the I believe the the verifier only comes to trust the attester through uh, key material. Um, it's it can't. There's no implicit trust. You can't have uh, a trust in the firmware or software. Um, that 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 trust always comes through the uh, attester signing evidence with a nonce typically um, i mean there may be some cases where the uh, the verifier and the attester are co-located on the same bus but that's not very interesting the interesting case is when the verifier and the attester are far apart so um, so, so i think so, both are possible and the the point of separating the roles from the actors is exactly for this reason, because <clears throat> there could be, by co-locating co them, you could be doing it to address the trust issue. And and so it is reasonable to say that there there's implicit trust because of their co-location. Can you, can you describe that use case a little more? Having the verifier co-located with the attester, yeah, yeah, a classic one use case where the 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 what we would call the attester, right? The the device has verifier capabilities integrated into, it. and so as part of the boot process, it you know verifies that it's booting the right code before transfers execution to the next bit of code and it's the, the connectivity is it's all running within the same execution environment okay um but uh some implicit trust there someone could but, but, drill down but, into that you know for any for any of these cases you could drill down into it and identify something that is a is local and something that is remote with respect to some some idea of a domain a domain boundary. So it, it gets it gets really difficult to try and find the words to be con concise, but still not disallow you know some of these other approaches. And so, I mean, I get where you're coming from, and I get that the 
the name of the RATS working group is remote attestation procedures, but you know, we haven't really defined what we mean by remote you know, on who you are and what you're building and you know, frame of reference is you know, remote could be lots of things. Yeah. So, so I don't think anything here is wrong. Um, maybe if if what you're pointing at is it isn't clear that the case that you're describing is you know isn't isn't uh, you know described, then we we could add that. But I I don't think we need to remove what's these other you know cases that are viable only because we think they're not common because we don't know what's going to be common and I don't think at this point. Um, yeah, I think you would, there's some text definitely needs to be added that describes the remote case because what's really described here under verifier is only the the non remote case. Uh, maybe the language could be better. I so saw I'm just listening and thinking about this. I think the my interpretation of implicit trust is when you put trust in something that is not vouched for by anything else. So, for example, um, by vouch for by any other, you know, any other key material, or whatever. So, let's say your uh, uh, endorser, or perhaps the endorser's uh, certificate authority, uh, would be an implicit trust because nothing is vouching for the the, the root of the certificate chain. Right? You're implicitly trusting your your. That's the thing that you put in your trust anchor store. Whatever you put in your trust anchor store, you're implicitly trusting. Yeah. So, so some folks have a different use of implicit in the context of attestation, which is to say that the assertion, the claim that you're making uh, won't exist uh, if it isn't true. And the reason is because the key can't exist because of the way the keys are derived that, um, you know, the, you can, you know, if the key exists. And so you could turn that around the other way. If the key exists, then you can imply that the claim is true because because you happen to have insight into how the key was created. So it's a different kind of use of implicit trust. <clears throat> Potentially it's confusing to those. Yeah. Here I'm looking at the, there's two uses of implicit in the text that uh, Lawrence is referring to. One is in the third line down from verifier where it says, a verifier might be configured to implicitly trust firmware or even software. Not, um, the, the the third line down from the heading uh, and then the second one is the last sentence of that one the component that is implicitly trusted is often referred to as root of trust right in between there is the opposite side right because a verifier might be configured to implicitly trust from or even software and then the next sentence says a stronger level of assurance comes when information can be vouched for by secure by hardware or by rom code so that tells me the meaning of implicitly trust is uh, firmware or software that is not vouched for by hardware or by ROM code. Um, and so that's what I'm re reading in here as the definition of implicit trust in this context. Yeah, yeah. I don't it's disagree. Not, not vouched for by anybody. Yeah, not I don't say, disagree. I don't that's disagree. I'm with... reading it. I don't know if that's the intent. Yeah. It, does, it, it doesn't seem like implicit is the right word here. I mean, the, the trust is either based on key material or it's based on like co location on a bus that they're, they're, that they're you know, really connected. Um, and I, no, is, I, I, I like that the, I think it's useful to be able to have words for the, the attestation process, which we're right now we're using the word vouched for to be that term, which is, which is, you know, maybe that's fine. Uh, but at least maybe, to, yeah. maybe be more, more direct in the paragraph to say, this is what we mean by that term, and then you can use it to describe the properties. Here it's sent at the end. So the definition is, is at the end, tra tra trailing the conversation about trust. And But but otherwise, it would be great if we had a, 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 a word that we all agreed on is the, the form of trust that you get from applying rats. And if we say vouched for is fine. So what vouched for is fine, about... but it's a little bit of a mouthful. Uh, it, it's actually it is creating an indirection. So maybe it's indirect trust or direct trust. 
but then again, there's no semantics here we define. So vouched for might be more, but I think that is exactly what we mean. So in the first use of implicitly, I was trying to figure out if deleting that word would have the same meaning in the sentence. If if we if we use vouched for, then we can do the opposite of it and say not vouched for. But you know, if we if we if we had a better word, then we could just have one word and then the anti version of that word. So, I mean, my I, the text I added was quite different. Um, was was this the problem you were trying to solve, or was there something else too? I just wanted to say, if we can fix this, assuming that there's something to fix here, is this paragraph the only paragraph, or was there more to this discussion we still have to talk about after this? Um, so, uh, I mean, the the, um, the core as far as what's is... missing or broken, uh, as far as what's missing or broken, is this the paragraph that you said, okay, well, we need to fix this, and then maybe there's some other stuff too, or is there something else that's, that's missing or broken besides this paragraph? Well, let me let me try describe it at a higher level. Um, I wanted to be clear about um, the, that the trust comes from in 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 a very large number of use cases, and in, in the particularly in the remote use use cases, that the trust comes from the attester signing evidence, and that there's with freshness. Um, I, I wanted to have discussion of that trust in the verifier section and and in the attester section. And I wanted to move any discussion about security strength into security considerations. So is so I, that was like three. There's like three things there. So the last yeah. one was discussion about security strength. Are there instances of the discussion yeah. somewhere in here? Yeah. Because you start discussing hardware, physical uh, tampering resistance, and where's that at? Towards the end, of the level of assurance. a stronger level of assurance. Oh, I see. Um, so I think the stronger level of assurance section is actually important in here because it changes who you're trusting. Huh? Well, you're trusting a different entity, right? You're either trusting, say, the software provider or you're trusting the hardware provider, for example. The verifier only ever trusts the um, the endorser. Well, uh, okay. No. No, the verifier trusts whoever signs things. And this is saying if the hardware signs things, then it's the hardware and or the hardware manufacturer, meaning your endorser is endorsing the hardware. In the other case, it's the firmware or software, and maybe who uh, endorses the firmware or software independent of the hardware. So, so, so to me, there's two cases. There's a case where the verifier is trusting an attester because they are part of the same system and they're, they're, it's not a remote attestation. Um, we were calling this implied, uh, implied trust. Um, the other case is where it is a remote attestation. The verifier is not trusting the attester directly at all. It's a transitive trust because the verifier is trusting the uh, endorser uh, through um, the endorsement. That that is one case. It is certainly not the only case in this in this document. Yeah, yeah, agreed. Right. That there are cases where they where there is no endorser. It's uh, as we talked about before. It's it, it's not scalable. But if you have a very small deployment or very small number of entities, then you actually don't need an endorser. Um. So describe that. That that that's probably a disconnect here for, for me. Um. So it's re, say it's a remote attestation. How do you have yep. a, re, a remote attestation without key material? You, you have it with key material. The key material. So uh, as I've mentioned it before in the comments on pull requests, because I don't think you were in the meeting then, but I've explained it in the comments here. So I'm just going to repeat what's in there, because uh, um, you have to trust key material, okay? So there's a key, uh, let me back up for a second. There's a key that's in the attester, okay? In the case where you have an endorser, what's happening is you have the endorser's key that signs the attester's key, and that's what we call an endorsement, right? It's one key signing another key, 
Um, or in the verifier, you have a trust anchor store. So when you have a set of uh, evidence that comes in, you say, hey, is this signed by something I can chain up to a key that's in my trust anchor store? When you have an endorsement, you're saying, oh, let's take the tester's key. Let's see if I can get an endorsement uh, signed by some endorser. Great, it is, that's valid. And now I can see if the endorser's key is in my trust anchor store, right? That's the case where you're using a, an endorser. Um, or perhaps you might even have a case where you say the endorser's key is not in the trust anchor store, but the endorser's key has its own cert chain that chains through some PKI up to some certificate authority, and the certificate authority is in the trust anchor store. That's a case. Um, then there's a case that is much less scalable that says, okay, when the evidence comes in, it's signed by the attester's key. If the attester's key itself is in the verifier's trust anchor store, you don't need the endorsement, right? Because it's already chained to a key because it was right there in the evidence. It's not scalable as much because now you have to have some way of getting the attester's key itself into the verifier's trust anchor store for every attester that uses that verifier. It can be done, but only if you have a very small number of things and maybe the verifier and the attester are created by the same entity. And so it's really easy. You don't need an extra role in there, an extra step of keys, but it's possible. And the manufacturer runs ways. the verifier. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. When the, when the manufacturer does the verifier, the tester, you have a total of 20 devices that's in your you know, special high military grade uh, deployment, and you don't need an extra key in there. You just stick the 20 devices, keys, and the trust anchor store, the verifier, and you call it good, and you don't need anything else that's, that's an endorsement in that case. It's kind of a trivial special case, but it's absolutely possible, and there are uh, at least demo deployments. I can't say for sure whether they're in use in, say, military-grade stuff, because I wouldn't know that, but I can say certainly um, in uh, demos and research and things, it's absolutely possible to do it that way. And so the text in this document is flexible enough that all the models that I just mentioned uh, all apply, meaning that the, uh, all the text is carefully worded such that all of those models, um, none of those are precluded in any of the text in the document. Right. So, so there, there's a real use case where one that I, I know of in detail, where one Fortune 500 company, a manufacturer of uh, um, kind of an, a tester of sorts, ships uh, shipped monthly a database of millions of seeds for keys to the verifier. So this, the, and though those, so, since those were seeds for keys, they had to be kept secret because the. the, the so we all agree that this that that case is 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 yeah. covered. But I don't yeah. understand what what we're trying to fix. I still don't okay. know. Okay, so if we agree that uh, that case is covered, then so then 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 what you have here is use cases where the key material flows into the into the verifier um, some, uh, from the endorser by some uh, undocumented, un, non-explicit um, path. It's not in the diagram. By the, the definition of endorser uh, of endorsement that that uh, Dave is using, the key material can flow um, into the the verifier from, you know, by a path that's not on the system diagram. Um, and to me, that's really weird and confusing for something as important as the key material, the verification key material. That's that that is very strange and weird to me. The system diagram sh should show all of the really important critical things um, that are necessary for an endorsement and the the and in necessary for think an that, attestation. And I think what you're talking about, if I understand right, I think you're talking about how do you configure the verifier's trust anchor store? And I would say, and there's, you know, how do you configure the, ver the relying party's trust anchor store and so on. That I don't think configuring trust anchor stores, in my opinion, is not specific attestation. It's a general problem. And I if I'm remembering right, wasn't that the topic of Michael's document that uh, was a separate document, which is not a working group document right now, but it was presented and a lot of people liked it and said, hey, this is bigger than just RADS. It's a cool problem. Um, oh, and maybe IDEV ID considerations? The IDEV yeah, ID no, considerations? No, no, it no. Wasn't no. In RATS. Yeah. Well, you're talking about how do you configure that? For, right, right. Not, we're saying it's yeah. not specific to attestation, but there is the problem of how do you configure the trust anchor store? And you say, how do you get the key material into there? That's the config, that's provisioning a trust anchor store. I mean, how do you get somebody else's public key into your trust anchor store? 
if you're using public key. I mean, to me, this is uh, because it's attestation and that the trust is transitive through this, through the endorser. Um, to me, that should be explicit. Because, but, but because again, it's, it's, it's not in the scope of this document to uh, uh, define solutions that are not red specific. We have to say, though, and I think that's a good point, that all of these roles can have trust anchor stores, and yes. those should have to be managed in a uh, feasible way. And maybe we can even elaborate on a few exemplary ways to do that, no. but that is an over-describing, uh, over-prescriptive thing, I think. Yeah, I was so, going to say the same thing as Hank, although I wasn't going to say to put it into here, but I would be fine with saying trust anchor store provisioning at these different roles. Uh, for more discussion of that, see Michael's document in for informational reference. And then if it's informational, it doesn't have to be an RFC and we can just reference uh, that. Document. I, well, I appreciate the reference. I, I, I don't think that it, I, go ahead, Peter. Go ahead, Peter. I, I, was, I agree that we should not. Uh, um, go into a lot of detail on how that is done because there's so much variation on how that might be done and different use cases are going to have different ways. So if the concern really is that the diagram doesn't have um, a, a explicit path of how that, that trust is established, maybe it would suffice just to put a little note with the diagram that uh, says that here that, that this relies on a means that trust is established here because we're putting trust in things like keys. So just acknowledge that it needs to be done. So, so it's it's a system diagram. So uh, the, the everything else in the diagram is very specific to attestation. Provision in the trust anchor store is more general. <clears throat> Do other calls that, you know, draw arrows between boxes go into mm -hmm. sort of deep explanation about how the keys got provisioned and the trust anchors got provisioned in order to talk about the protocol? Uh, no, a good analogy, I think, would be the TEEP working group, which I'm also an editor of the architecture document. Uh, or at least I inherited it and as added as the last uh, author after it already existed. Um, and that <laughs> one has it in a different section because it has more details to talk about, but it's not in the equivalent of this picture right here. In other words, it's treated as a separate topic, but it's covered in the document because it says, here's what the trust anchor stores are and who trusts who. So it has kind of a equivalent section of trust model with a table in it in their case, um, which may not be necessary here. But uh, it, it didn't update the system diagram to answer your question. So, so if I may okay. go back a moment, and we have only 10 minutes left. Um, uh, I, I think, Lawrence, and we've kind of been down this road a couple times uh, together. Um, the, I think that, that the, the pushback you're getting is because not that this is not an important activity, but that, that the the variety of different ways of doing it um, is means that it's very hard for us to, in a reasonable document, say anything useful about it. Okay, um, we certainly can't say anything normative. For, forget whether the architecture is normative or not. Not normative. Or no, okay. Um, uh, the, the point is that that it's outside of the normative parts of the architecture, the part that we're really trying to get commonality on, and. So how can we say something about something that has a wide variety of different things and is very specific to uh, specific uh, verticals? And that's why we're reluctant to say something because anything we say, someone will say is wrong. Doesn't apply to my situation, right? Or I'm doing it differently. Is that okay? And we get regularly do get this this problem. You know, three years after an RFC public is published, someone says. Well, it says here to do this, but my situation is different. I said, well, it doesn't matter to the protocol, right? Read, read my proposed text and see if you think I'm being I, specific. I, I, I don't understand your proposed text addressing this issue at all. So, so that was even part of it. I don't know what you're trying to say, but um, I understand again what you're trying to say. What you're you explained to us is that you feel that the way in which the anchors and endorsements and reference values get into the verifier is of critical importance and needs to be explained. Just to, just to focus on the key material. Okay. Well, 
I, I think that is a, uh, it is a really important thing. It's so important that I just don't think it fits in this document in a way that we can reasonably say something that is inclusive enough so that people don't go, oh, well, that doesn't apply to me. I'm not going to use this architecture at all. Yeah, right. I, I, I'm not buying that argument <laughs> at all. Um, we go on for paragraphs and pages about nonsense and freshness. So it's yeah, but, like but that's it, because that's because that's a part, a normative part that we want to standardize, right? We want people to do this in one of four ways, okay? And we want the protocols to actually be interoperable at that level. And what we're saying is we don't even think we have no hope of of standardizing the way in which key material gets into the verifier. And I'm not asking for standardizing, and I'm asking for some general abstract discussion about it. Maybe a few sentences. That's all. I mean, I'm not asking for the same level of detail of a non. The non's discussion and the freshness discussion has got separate entire documents with specific okay. stuff in that, and that's all fine. I, I, I'm just saying that the okay. You well, have I didn't understand. I would come. Sorry, sorry. I would come back to Dave's proposal that was very, very simple. It says all of these roles rely on a trust anchor, a trust store. Sorry, and they have uh, uh, trusted keys or whatever. The key material has to be managed. Has to be carefully established. Uh, also, there's a comment from me how to establish stuff, uh, but we didn't come to this today. And um, and maybe maybe that is the thing that we have to uh, uh, prefix this chapter with that all of these roles, of course, rely on key material. And and this has to be managed with, with secure protocols that are out of scope of this document. Well, that be okay for you. Uh, well, it doesn't really get it because to me the attestation key, key material is really special. It is uh, it has to be cared for by the root of trust in a way, um, and it, that attestation key material really the whole all of attestation hinges on it in a fundamental way. I mean. It, I, I agree with you, but 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 the key material you now you talk jumped into the private key material, which I agree has a very very specific care. But you were talking before about the public key material getting into the verifier, which has a different thing. So I actually I, your I'm initial about... green. Let me jump back here. So this initial green that you have, where you added this four lines of thing, I I, I don't I don't have a big objection to, although though I I understand the discussion. Um, about Dave, Dave had what I really don't understand is actually the next part where you removed a bunch of 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 content, or rewrote it in a way that I didn't understand. Okay, and and that's where I think we're getting actually getting into also problem. People didn't. I'm actually that. I'm okay with I'm okay with with uh, putting that back. I mean, I was somewhat uh, confused about it and some of the wording about implicit trust and and uh, kind of I don't know lack of examples or something like that, but. Um, the the important thing is to me is the you know the the attestation key material the, the sort of the cycle of the attestation key material of how it flows between the attester the verifier and the endorser or the 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 non endorser that uh, sometimes exists uh, uh, the way Dave describes it the 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 non in, the non endorser key handler the key the key the key setter upper that's not an endorser because you because Dave says we have one of those so okay um, I I don't know how to respond if, I, 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 I if you to call it the setter upper you're just saying two provisions the trust anchor store of the verifier. Regardless of whether you have an endorser or not, it's not the endorser that does that. It's the, the, the verifier owner, I might say, that updates the trust anchor store of the verifier. We, we could use terminal, you know, to avoid talking about things in the negative, uh, you know, the, mm -hmm. the um, you know, musician formerly known as, you know, whatever, <clears throat> we could, you, <laughs> you can say that, you know, the verifier is owned by the endorser and the, the tester is owned by the endorser and they, the endorser provision, you know, the trust anchors in such a way that there isn't a question about who trusts who. So, that, that, you, you know. Me, David, all I'm saying is that the verifier owner provisions the trust anchor store in the verifier. The relying party owner provisions the trust anchor store in the relying party. 
the fill in the blank owner the provisions the trust anchor store of whatever fill in the blank was right mm -hmm. okay so, so and how you do that to... is the subject of michael's document so so it is and it isn't okay um actually um so okay. uh, um so so um i, I want to quibble about your comment about provisioned in the endorsers not in, to in general in the case where the iot device generated its own key pair at the factory i still think of that as provisioning a key in my mind, because it has yes. to communicate securely, the public key is extracted. Still yes. a provisioning yeah. process. So, so that's a quibble about the terminology where I actually think provision is actually the right word, and and Lawrence is used. Okay, but I want to I want to pick a nit that the 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 keys the the key pairs that are provisioned into the attester. I I I, I don't I still disagree with your assertion that it's that, that my statement is incorrect. I, but well, I'm saying but. I, 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 see point. Point. I see your point. I see your point. Your point. Your point. There's so, a distinction so the, between and roles here that I, I, the, I'm trying to point out. But go ahead, finish. I, your I actually, I'm agreeing with you. Okay, so Ed. the the process, the the process of of provisioning private key material, and I'm I'm going to stick with that term, whether it's yep. self generated or or factory generated or whatever. That process of provisioning the private key material into the device is. Uh, is some is conceptually different than the process of provisioning trust anchors into whatever, okay? The trust and, store. and the trust right. anchor store, and the, and 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 it it has to do with the fact that it's okay if the trust anchor store is 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 revealed all along its process. Mm -hmm. It doesn't break the security. It may break the privacy, but no. it doesn't break the security, right? It, um, go on. And 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 I think of the verifier. And the uh, specifically the verifier as something that's probably provisioned by downloading a signed blob from something or uh, uploading a floppy disk or whatever um, kind of thing. Whereas it, it's 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 a different skill set and different environment for the tester. It's something that, that you know you like literally may be blowing fuses on the device, and and that's it's, it's just it's just it's just because it's it it is a different uh, process. Um, we can do many different things in a different way and it could have different security considerations to it. So uh, that's all I'm trying to say. So so I, I guess I understand that I, I think that that Lawrence is trying to 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 uh, bring the circle all the way around so that we can see that the trust relationship starts with the manufacturer and ends with the manufacturer because everyone else has a circle to it. So I think he's trying to do. Yes. I, I agree with you that the text is not working for this. Um, and and um, uh, and maybe the word provisioned is totally wrong. So um, the word into to, is the key problem in line twenty. Maybe it's Seven the word. Nine. Maybe into. it's the word into is provisioned, yeah. and just you know. So uh, if it's provisioned by the endorser. That's enough, right? Uh, you remove that, and you're maybe everyone's happy. Would that actually make no. you happy, Dave? No, I, no, no, because uh, in the definition of the attester, I mentioned there might not be an endorser. So, by the endorser is also wrong. Yeah. Okay. So, if there's no endorser, endorser so, so then every time we say endorser, do we have to say endorser and or manufacturer? Um, n no, the attester. You could say by the attester's manufacturer. Yeah, so so this is the problem yeah, that we but have. The point is, we, but the point we're is, trying so, to, yeah. oh, go ahead. we're trying to cover a, a so many different uh, 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 permutations of this right. that we wind up having slashes and blah blah blahs all over the place. And right. that's and, why I, I would yeah. prefer to stick with the text that we already have rather than uh, when we have a particular point like this, because the point that we're discussing right now is not a new point, right? Yeah, there's already not, text yeah. that we've beat up a bunch, and it's very hard to get the wording right. And anti-wording uh, for concepts we've already discussed is always very dangerous because it means we get into discussions like this. Yeah, and I actually think that that we're wasting our time quibbling over this um, because one of the IESG reviewers will tell us that we have to write it differently and because something or other. So um, I just think we should just say we should just say we're it's good enough for the moment and ship it and and come back to it in three months because that's what's going to happen anyway. You're not wrong. I'm okay with using the word endorser simply because we've defined 
it as the thing that's providing um, it's providing you know sure you know, if you go read the definition of endorsement it is the thing that's describing the trustworthiness properties of the key so it's okay to say endorser here we don't have to quibble about whether it's a manufacturer isn't an endorser or whatever I think it's Technically wrong here, but we're already out of time. So thank you. Yeah, I'm Lawrence. I will try to write something different. Okay, <laughs> um, and I'll see what you like. Okay. Okay. The system examples is also a, a really helps remedy this for me, and um, I, I wanted to get some consensus of, of you know whether you're whether we're okay with adding those or not. Um, I mean. Uh, uh, the the stuff I put in there was was just a rough example or a, a rough um, first set of examples. Um, I think more can be added and they can be improved a lot. But uh, it was really intended to to help make it make the make it so the reader can understand how this stuff really manifests in a real way. And 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 I didn't want to go into details of um, the uh, internals of the attester. Just just uh, and I do want to add a passport model uh, example. So, um, uh, well, this is related to you know making all of this clear to, uh, for me. So I think that they're important. But anyway, I, I'm I'm certainly willing to do a lot more work on the system examples. I mean, I, and and you know, don't assume that this. I I actually think that you should put them in another document. Um, so do I. For the same yeah, reason uh, as like Michael's use cases document was a separate document. Um, I, I think you should, I think it's actually really valuable. I would even go to the point where some of your examples actually deserves a document on their own. Here's how the rats architecture is applied to the case of blah, blah, blah. Okay. And uh, I would go, you know, it's, it's, it's where I thought the use case document might go, mm -hmm. but um, I don't actually have probably the knowledge to to write that for a number of of cases. I think you should be as specific as you can in the system in the examples. Um, don't call them examples. Call them applicability statements. Um, IETF loves to publish applicability statements, but hates probably to publish use cases. So um, that's where I would go with this, Lawrence. Um, and. Uh, Given that it's non-normative text in the architecture, I actually think that that it would have a bigger impact as a separate document. Okay, I, I, yeah, I, can, I agree can for I the same that? reasons. I agree for the same reasons. Um, uh, I, I just find the architecture document really, really hard to understand um, for the for the the true remote cases because of the wording and the way the key flows and all. I find that really the architecture document really hard to understand because it's so abstract and. Yeah. That's right. It's it's abstract, and that's that's the that's the problem we're dealing with is that we're trying to write a document that covers a whole bunch of cases, and so we can't. Every time we get specific, we get into oh, but no, that doesn't apply to that case. Well, let's write out that case. Yeah. Okay. I, I, and, my, I think the big problem here is is the preconceived notion of an an endorsement that that everybody thinks an endorsement is something, and and that that doesn't fit. That that's where the the big problem is for me, but. Um, um, anyway, I'll, let's, I'll think about it as a separate document, but... Um, okay. You're not alone in this, uh, right. Lawrence. We can help you with this. And I yes. think there are a lot of people motivated to help you here. And yeah. uh, we just want to... Don't, the, the, part of our reasons here, we have to get this out to the ISC at some point. And I think this is a bigger construction site that we can take on at the moment. And there is... But I'm, I'm not I'm not neutral on the, on the separation, but I'm, I'm very positive on the... We will help you with this. And we make this okay. good. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. All right. <laughs> bye bye. Okay. Tuesday. Question. Thanks. Bye. So we're meeting Tuesday. again on Tuesday. Tuesday. Yeah. Okay. Fine. Okay. Bye.